Welcome back to Investor Intel. I'm Peter Clausey, and today is Stephen Borrega from Romeo's Gold Corp. Romeo's is a multi-jurisdictional exploration company, and we're going to talk about some of those jurisdictions. Welcome, Stephen. Thanks for having me, Peter. How are you doing? I'm well. You're a PH Stephen, not one of those V Stevens, right? We're all very particular about the way we spell our name, aren't we? The, the Stevens are. Yeah. So the flagship property is up in the Golden Triangle in northern BC, right? It's one of it's certainly one of the core assets that we have. Um, as you mentioned, we're multi-jurisdictional, and BC is definitely a major focus for us. We we had a massive work program this past summer, and we we're fortunate enough to identify a very significant IPMT target uh, with some of the work completed this summer. Uh, we're in the as you as you say in the Golden Triangle. We're along the southern boundary of the Galore Creek assets. That's a massive target that's owned co-owned by Newmont and Tech. Right. And we're along that southern boundary and their road access, proposed access road, partially completed road actually intersects the uh, treks, the trek uh, block. You have good access to your property. We certainly do. Uh, it's a kilometer away. Uh, there's a mill, proposed mill site 10 kilometers away. Um, I gave a speech in a follow up article about seven years ago that the best mining story in the world was the Northwest transmission line. The <laughs> The federal government, the BC government poured almost what, 80, $800 million into building that. And companies like yours are the beneficiary of that energy. Absolutely. No doubt about it. So, so you have access to power. You have, and, and of course, road access is something that is extraordinary in the triangle. Yeah. Uh, you look at some of the, uh, some of the massive, um, a massive dollars being spent just to get into these properties. Uh, for us to be able to have a road a uh, kilometer away and then a mill site proposed not that far away either as the crow flies is is uh is very fortuitous and you have maps and 3d models and everything that an investor would want available at the website right we certainly do i mean the target is about 800 800 meters excuse me 800 meters long approximately 500 meters wide the ip shows it extending 650 meters deep and the mt shows it going down an additional kilometer and a half oh uh, and that's when we cut it off uh, it shows going much deeper than that, but of course, it's not of interest of uh, past 2K. Okay, uh, so our time is limited. You have a Quebec sure. project. I'm more curious about the Nevada project. Nevada is consistently ranked one of the three top mining jurisdictions in the world. So what's going on in, in Nevada? I couldn't agree more with you. In fact, one of the one of the reasons why I was brought on board was to try and streamline the company and decide how best to focus the company. And in my opinion, Nevada certainly should be our focus. So we have two core assets down in Nevada. One is called the Kincaid and one is called SCOSA. SCOSA is something that's been on our books for since 1999. Mm. We've had some extraordinary early days results, some bonanza grade drill results. And that was back in 2000. So two, 22 years ago, we did some small work programs, came back with some extre extremely positive gold results. And we basically, because of the price of gold being $250 an ounce, it simply wasn't a priority target. So yeah. I'm fortunate to be able to blow the dust off of this barn find and get back to it. And we have a plan for drilling at SCOSA this year at Q1 and Q2, and a Q1 into Q2. Right, so that's post uh, implementation of 43101. So that means that's data you can rely upon. <laughs> it is uh, It is certainly data we can rely upon. It's, uh, but it was very limited, very limited, and just a few holes, very narrow diameter core, and not very deep. So we got to get back there with a proper rig, drill a fence of holes up the side, and essentially what we're after, boiling zone material, very similar to this. You know, is this, that up in the, sorry, Stephen, is that in the mountains or out in the flats? It's in, it's foothills, uh, definitely not mountainous, uh, but Scosa is very accessible. It's in Northwestern uh, state, and uh, it's up by where the Rosebud and Highcroft would be. Yeah, uh, past, you, yeah Winnemucca. Right, you're, Winnemucca. You're you, got Winnemucca. It. you got it. I've been so to Winnemucca. It's a, it's a great asset. I'm really looking forward to getting uh, some, some drills turning. Uh, we've got some basic work to do. In fact, I had a, a 3D model recently commissioned to better understand what's been done to date. They only ever mine down at Scosa 400 feet. The average grade of the ore that came out over an ounce per ton. Uh, some of it was so high grade, it just went straight into the vault. It wasn't processed. What about the other project in Nevada? It's called Kincaid. Uh, it's now in, now you're looking at Southwestern. It's down the Walker Lane area. It's just east of Hawthorne. 
And right. it's a property that we picked up when I joined the, the company just last year in November. Uh, it's 109 claims. It's it, really interesting. There's two, two sides to this story. There's the southern half and the northern half. On the northern half, we're looking at these large sort of blue sky scar and structures, the, you know, the, the contact points with the granites on the northern extreme of the property. It's exciting. It's exactly the same structure that was is being mined at the Isabella Pearl Mine, which is about 15 kilometers away. On the southern half of this property, it was a complete surprise to us when we were out there staking. There are former workings everywhere. And every time we hit a new, an old adit, an old former working, we find this kind of material, this copper stained uh, nice. material, chrysocolla. Um, it is exciting. We've hit 16 targets so far. We've probably got another 20, 20 to 30 targets we just haven't got to yet. And of uh, course, all days. of those historic workings appear in the government maps, right? <laughs> That's right. Found one. It was one. <laughs> we found one of them. It's an old working called the Silver King Mine. And uh, we thought we were actually on it. And you, if for, for those who are our viewers here, can go to one of our, our PowerPoint presentations on the website and you'll see we didn't go, we didn't find it. It's about four valleys further north to where we were. But these, these former workings are everywhere, at its pits, trenches, and there's copper strewn across the entirety of the southern half of this property, and it's riding, running with gold, silver, and both at times. So uh, we're excited. It's early days. We've got to get some ge geologists on the ground, some, someone who can spend two months uh, cataloging, sampling, and just better, better, better understanding what we see at surface. And then we'll get to some targets and we'll we'll have a much better uh, sense of what we'll be doing sometime in Q2 for upcoming drill programs. So when I look at your balance sheet, I look at your shares issued note, and I hear you say that, it sounds like we're unlocking value for shareholders in 2023. That's a goal. No question about it. I couldn't say it better. All right. So PDAC has been unfortunately moved back to the first week of March. I really liked it in June. Can you and I talk before that? We'll see what's going on. I look forward to it. Thanks very much for the time today, Peter. Stephen Borrega from Romeo's Gold, Peter Clausey signing off from Investor Intel. Thanks for your time. Have a great day.